re-examination of Sir Joe Bjorka Peterson is expected to be completed tomorrow, the last formal public hearing day of the Fitzgerald inquiry. Back in 1986, the run-down port office and its riverside grounds were ripe for development. Port office hotel development to Singapore businessman Robert Sung, about the time Sung gave him a $100,000 donation to the National Party. Who delivered bags of cash to his office, that, which but, went into uh, a Very much I would, indeed I would. I don't want to get involved in a whole lot of information. Good job. You know, since he dropped the probate taxes and it just grew, grew, grew. And uh, you'd think that he was on some big stealing charge. So Joe told the Fitzgerald inquiry in 1988 that he didn't know of Robert Sorden's business Charges to Joe with one count of official corruption and two of perjury. Perjury carries a maximum penalty of 14 years jail and corruption charges come almost three years after Sir Joe resigned as Premier, ending a 19-year And, uh, you know, he's to go to trial in September. Uh, I don't know how he's going to have a fair jury. I wish they'd pick the friends of Joe to go on the jury. We've made up their mind already. When I was 19 and had nearly finished a marketing diploma, I was summoned for jury service. As a student, I could have been excused, but I preferred to go, and I was lucky that it didn't interfere with my studies too much. Some days I'd be required for a case, others I'd be home by lunchtime. In three weeks, I'd served on a couple of trials, small criminal matters like assault and vandalism. I saw it as my civic duty. I don't know how I feel about it now, or if I'd go through it again. Sitting in the dock was Sir Joe Bielke Peterson, the former Premier of Queensland. He was Premier when I was born, all through my childhood and the years I went to school. Now, some of us would be chosen to pass judgment on him. <laughs> this is the fifth trial I've been on this month. Yeah, well, then you got no chance. Uh, right. All rise. Your Honour, there is before the court an indictment charging Johannes Bjorki Peterson with one count of perjury. The Crown would wish to proceed with that indictment. That on the 5th day of December 1988, at Brisbane in the state of Queensland, you, in the course of the hearing of evidence in a commission of inquiry, knowingly gave false testimony to the effect that... As to at hear the time it read out, the charge sounded complicated but it meant that Sir Joe was charged with perjury over evidence he gave at the Fitzgerald inquiry three years before. He had claimed that at the time he was given $100,000 by a developer named Robert Sung, he knew very little about Sung and his plans to build a luxury hotel in Brisbane. The prosecution alleged he knew a lot more. Are you guilty or not guilty? I am not guilty. May it please your honor. I appear for the accused with my learned friend, Mr. Gundlach. Begin. Like a bloody lottery. Diana May Howard. Challenge. Thank you, Miss Howard. You can return to your seat. Gary Graham Goss. <laughs> Challenge. It's 22. They don't like any of us. Luke Edmund Shaw. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. This guy has a good buck on his When Luke Shaw stepped out of the crowd, he didn't look like the type Sir Joe would have approved of. Yet after so many rejections, he was the first one chosen. And the prisoner at the bar, whom you shall have in charge, and true verdict given accordance to the evidence, so help you God. So help me God. <clears throat> Matthew Shea. You shall well and truly try and true deliverance make between our sovereign lady of the Queen and the prisoner at the bar whom you shall have in charge and true verdict given accordance to the evidence. So help you God. So help me God. Does any member of the jury feel that by reason of any association or for any other reason, he or she would be unable to reach an impartial verdict in this case? How long do you think that we'll be on the 
jury. Well, the bailiff says it might go on for a month. Oh, I hope not. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. You'd get out of the way of things, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd lose all your habits. You might be out of here in a few weeks. Oh, yes, yeah, so Joe might confess. <laughs> well, I hope we don't have to be here on a Saturday and a Sunday. Oh, where are you taking us to lunch? Doesn't he look the part? Very snappy threats. I, uh, have to go somewhere afterwards. <laughs> Nice. Mind if I sit down and kill Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> Giving you a bit of stick, aren't I? <laughs> the essence of the charge is that the accused told deliberate lies about his knowledge of Mr. Robert Sung's business activities. The issue, which is central to the case, is the state of the accused knowledge of Mr. Sung and his business activities in Queensland at this time. What was Mr. Sung, in fact, doing? Well, there had been a proposal from early 1986 for the establishment of a hotel, a luxury hotel, on the site of the port office in Brisbane. You'll hear that in the course of 1986 and through the beginning of 1987, in pushing that proposal, Mr. Sung had much contact with the accused. And in the course of these meetings, these uh, representations, the payment of a sum of $100,000 was made to the accused. Those events will be unveiled in the course of the evidence that you will hear. I propose to call first evidence that will establish what the accused said on the 5th of December, 1988. Um, at the time that that gentleman brought the $100,000 to you, was he at that very time actually in business in Queensland? Not that I know of, no. I don't know that he was, no. Did he have any <clears throat> plans to get into business in Queensland, I according think, to what you understood? I think he I think he may have wanted to get into business in, in Queensland sometime, yes. And what did you understand to be the area of business in Queensland that he was contemplating getting into? Well, they, uh, they were, he was an overseas man from Hong Kong, and they had all sorts of businesses. What range of businesses did... Uh... Did you understand that this particular gentleman from Hong Kong was contemplating getting into? Well, if you put it like that, I believe he wanted to, like most of them, get into the hotel business somewhere. Uh, where? In Brisbane or in the country? Well, I think anywhere they had a suitable proposition. Well then, Sir Joe, isn't it clear that well, you would have had some discussion with this gentleman about his plans for the future investment in Queensland at some stage? Now you talk to me like that, I can remember we what it was we did say. He came back after many months to start a cocoa plantation in North Queensland, growing coconuts up there, coconut palms. Was he also interested in uh, hotel development? Yes, I, I believe he could have been interested in hotel, yeah, sure. In Brisbane or in the country? Well, I didn't have any discussions in depth with him. I met him that occasion that he came to see me. I don't think he was there more than five The minutes. case hinged on Sir Joe's answers. The question we had to answer was, how much had Sir Joe known of Robert Sung's business plans? But as I sat there listening, I kept thinking, how can you tell if he's lying? It just sounds like Sir Joe. Whenever the lawyers wanted to argue some point with the judge, we were locked up in a little room adjoining the court. I suppose we were a pretty good mix of Queenslanders. Well, city ones, anyway. Even if we didn't seem to have that much in common. Well, should we get a weekly train ticket in the future? Well, how much will we save with a weekly ticket? Well, quite a lot. Have you known any other juries? Oh, no. I've been excused for exams. <clears throat> Everyone, the, uh, the bailiff will be back any minute. He'll want to know about the foreman. You? Oh, no, not me. I'm not interested. How about you, Dad? Well, come on, we have to have a foreman. You seem pretty clued up, Penny. Why don't you do it? Oh, no, thanks. I'd rather not. <laughs> well, if, um... If uh, nobody else wants it, then uh, I might as well take it. I was surprised at his eagerness, the way he rushed to throw his name into the ring. He seemed pretty sure of himself for someone on his first trial, like he had something to prove. He said later he'd done debating at school. Anyway, for better or worse, we had a foreman. Sir, is your full name Robert Sung? S-N-G, your name's being further Swee Lee, S-W-E-E-L-E-E? -E -E. That's right, sir. And your present address, Mr Sung, where do you live? I live in Singapore. And what is your occupation? 
businessman. Do you um, know Sir Joby Ockie Peterson? Yes, I do. And when did you first meet him? I first met him uh, was on the official opening of the Raby Bay development in 84. At that time, did you have any conversation with him? No, it was purely just handshake, hello. For the rest of the day, the prosecutor asked Sung about his hotel development and his dealings with Sir Joe, all the meetings and the $100,000 donation. His grasp on English seemed to slip whenever the questions got tough. Some of his explanations were harder to follow than Sir Joe's. And through it all, Val took notes. In another life, she may have been a court reporter. Look at that. Barry's done some more checking on the jury. Number four, Headley Friend, has been a shop steward of the Federated Iron Workers. Notice that all the people that asked to be excused from jury duty were men. Oh, I didn't. Oh, no, that's not true. They weren't all men. No, the ones that were women all wore suits and carried briefcases. Oh, they didn't. True. <laughs> well, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? I mean, if you were a doctor or a businessman, you wouldn't want to come here and sit in a jury for three weeks. Next. I should hope not. I wouldn't want to make an appointment with my doctor and find out that he was sitting on a jury. <laughs> oh, I've seen you at Fridays, haven't I? Nightclub? Yeah. Never been. Oh, well, um, maybe I should take you. You'd love it. I don't go out with boys. Why, oh, are you kinky? I only go out with men. <laughs> I like my tea from the pod best. When Evelyn and I came in on the train this morning, we talked about that donation from Mr. Song, didn't we? Sir Joe didn't keep the money for himself. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? It was a contribution from Mr. Song to the party. In cash. What's the difference? It wasn't for him personally. It wasn't his. I mean, he didn't use the money to buy a, a car, a big car, or a boat or anything. Yeah, but he'd be more into tractors, wouldn't he? <laughs> Peanut harvesters. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not a Joe man, but I, I just think the charges are a bit flimsy. Flimsy? Yeah, yeah, if that's all they've got on him. Perjury isn't flimsy. Well, I think it is. They've charged him with lying to an inquiry. If he's guilty, the question is why? Why did he lie? Perjury isn't flimsy, my boy. You know, what concerns me is that all those people out there will be wanting us to go one way or the other. They'll be saying, it's a political trial. It's not the truth that matters, it's what side you're on. Well, I used to Thelma. be a member of the Young Nationals, just for the social life. Thelma, it's not a question of what advised. side you're on, it's did he really do it or I not? The man's politically be... dead. Now, I've been a shop steward and all the rest of it for 16 years, and I couldn't give a stuff about Joe one way or the other. It's just, did he do it or not? Are you able to tell us about searches, inquiries, inspections made by yourself and Mr. Sung looking for possible sites for a Regent Hotel here in Brisbane? Yes, I am. Was the then Premier, Sir Joe B. Elka Peterson, the accused here seen? Yes, we saw the Premier. Can you recall any conversation then with him about this particular site and its availability? The Premier, I think, indicated that he, he thought it was a good site, but he made no comment as I recall, as to its availability. Were you present at any later meetings with Sir Joe where this particular topic was referred to? Yes, I was. And can you recall generally what occurred at those meetings? Well, generally, Mr. Song was seeking support, trying to make Sir Joe aware of the benefits of the Regent Hotel Group, and the nature and the quality of the development that would go on the land. Well, uh, we've all got our judgment day coming, eh? <laughs> How the hell would you know? Well, I mean, uh, every follower of Jesus Christ knows that. I don't follow anybody, man. No, it's, it's sort of weird, isn't it? I mean, here we are, sitting in judgment on someone else. I mean, what gives us the right? The judge. <laughs> it's a big responsibility, don't you think? Yeah, well, someone's got to do it. I mean, how, how does that make you feel? I mean, does, does that make you feel uncomfortable? It pays lousy. I don't take it very seriously. Yeah, it's very serious. 
you know, I, I'm sort of interested in, in the whole thing. I mean, the way that it sort of relates to history. For example, okay, there's, there's 12 apostles, and that's the exact number of people there are on a jury. I mean, that's worth thinking about, don't you think? No. Well, I, th I think it is. It's sort of like every day, you know. It's, it's sort of like, like the Last Supper, you know. I mean, e every day that we go in there, 12 people sitting down at their chairs, the 12 apostles ready to pass judgment. Day after day, the prosecution tried to show the extent of Sung's dealings with Sir Joe and his government. Public servants and ex-government ministers came and went. Keeping an open mind wasn't a problem. Keeping awake was. Could I take you to the 26th of February, 1986? Was there a dinner that evening at Parliament House that you attended? That is correct. How did this dinner come about? It came about, if I remember correctly, as a request from Robert Sung to present a report to the Premier in regard to his cocoa growing operations. And, of course, the fact that both women had been in attendance at Fakir. <laughs> They I think then that should be make a report to the Premier on what they'd observed. Robert Sung had uh, also made a tape of the plantations showing the planting of cocoa and the processing. We can't all be telling the truth. They all know each other, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah, that's for sure. It's what they're not telling you. That's what you've got to work out. I think that we should make it a rule not to talk about the trial during meal times. Well, don't you think so, Phil? I suppose. You know, Joe's lawyer at Greenwood, he's a labour man, do you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently he worked with Bob Hawke. Really? What did he do? Oh, well, I don't know, but if he's uh, decided to take on Sir Joe's case, he must think he's innocent. I mean, he's a labour man, you know? He's done all these cases for labour people. I don't know about that. He's just doing a job. Probably just wants to buy another yacht. <laughs> hmm. Well, I, I think it means something. This is a perjury trial. This is a trial on a charge of giving false evidence. I'll probably say it again before I sit down, but the reason I emphasize it is that the vast proportion of the time involved in the trial has been involved in an examination not of that aspect at all, but in an aspect of what is called corruption. The existence of a possible motive for him to tell lies to the Fitzgerald Commission. He has not been charged with corruption. The defence would probably say that there has been no corruption and no motive for Mr Bjorki Peterson. He was not telling deliberate lies, but was an old man suffering a defective memory and doing his best to tell the truth. Failing, but not telling lies. The Crown does not back off one step from its earlier contention that the accused motive could have been to conceal the connection between Mr Sung's donation and approval. But a second possible motive has emerged, that he did not want a connection made between political donations and his role in their receipt. <laughs> Mr Cowdery's summing up went on for two more days. He took us through the evidence in such detail it was like starting the trial all over again. Mr Greenwood had a more colourful approach. As things are, I am all that stands between Sir Joe and the last possible kick in the teeth this state can give him. The challenge to the Australian legal system is whether you 12 people are going to be able to judge this man for what he is supposed to have done as opposed to who he is. Mm. Joe Bielke Peterson is among, of all the public figures in the recent history of this country, the man who would be most well known to 12 people of the Queensland community. And it would be fair to say he has been a divisive character in his time. Yet, whether you love him or hate him, you must agree he has done a great deal of good for Queensland. Yet, my task is not to convert you to the Sir Joe fan club. I ask only that you keep to the tenet that everyone has the right to a fair go. And after years, and years of allegations that that man there is a crook, all they can come up with is this. Goldilocks could knock this over. In my submission to you, Joe Bielke Peterson is an innocent man and is entitled without question to a verdict of acquittal. If some of you agree with that, you will come by that very easy route to a verdict of not guilty. In the alternative, some of you might be persuaded that on balance, 
If you put the argument put forward by the Crown on one side of a beam balance and the argument put forward by us on behalf of the accused on the other side of the beam balance, there's not much in it. But it tilts slightly in favour of the Crown prosecution case. If you come to that conclusion, then yours is a verdict of not guilty. Because that is not proof beyond reasonable doubt. That is proof on balance. If, at the other end of the spectrum, there are some of you who, at the end of the day, are of the positive opinion that the man is guilty, but with reasonable doubt, then that group of you must join in a verdict of not guilty, because that is what he is entitled to. Mm. would test Australia's justice system. He said Sir Joe must be judged on what he's supposed to have done, not who he is. Mr Greenwood admitted that... Hey, Steve, see this? Pity old Joe don't drink. They'll be breaking out the champers before too long. Well, as long as he's had a fair trial. A fair trial? Mate, they'll be bending over backwards. Why should they? Of course he's Joe, the eighth wonder of the world, old rock joy, eh? the talking peanut. That doesn't come into it. Come on, mate, you're in the Young Nationals. You'd be pissed off if he was found guilty. He won't. They've got nothing on him. Spoken like a true believer. The trial had lasted 15 days and the defence had not called one witness. My only disappointment was that we hadn't seen Sir Joe perform. Thank you very much. Well, isn't this lovely? Yeah. It was a relief to be out of the courtroom and into the deliberations. But now came the hard part, making a decision while the whole nation waited. Jesus, it's hot in here. Is it hot in here or is it just me? No, it's hot in here, Kim. Hey, Michael, could you turn the air conditioning on, mate? Turn it up a bit. It hasn't been turned on. I'll see what I can do. Now, you're not to speak to anybody outside this room about your deliberations. Not even me. Right. No notes, no hand signals. Is that understood? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All messages to the outside world will have to be read and censored. Other than that, uh, you're on your own. Bye, Michael. Bye. 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 OK, yeah, does anyone want to take a vote? What, already? What? <laughs> Let's not worry about that too. We have to. Well, it's just that it seems fairly cut and dried to a uh, lot of people I've talked well, to. Well, 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 just slow down, mate. We only just got here. You can't just walk in after the trial and take a vote. You've got to think about it. Well, it's uh, actually a traditional procedure. Oh, to take come a... on. Where'd you get that from? But we've got to go through the evidence. That's what the judge said. Well, I'm not voting. I haven't made a decision. I'm abstaining. Yeah, I'm abstaining too. Why? We don't know if he's guilty or not. We've just got in Does here. anyone want to take a vote on whether we take a vote? Yeah, but don't forget, if after all that evidence you can't make up your mind, then the verdict's got to be not guilty because it's not beyond reasonable doubt. Excuse me, I'm still confused about the charge. There's a copy of the indictment in your file. Just read it. Thank you. It's early days here. Such a lot here. Okay, well, how are we oh. going to start this process? <laughs> well, we have to set an agenda. What do you mean, an agenda? Why don't we get a whiteboard? Then we can go through point by point everything that's happened and discuss it. Then things might become a bit clearer. I agree. That's a good idea. We spent the rest of the day going through the transcripts and exhibits. There was a small mountain of material. Thank God I packed enough shirts for a week. The good news is that you'll find a drinks trolley in your hotel corridor. The ration is one bottle of 4X per drinker. Oh. Oh, thank you hardly seems enough. The bad news is that the hotel's only got eight rooms, so some of you'll have to double up. The uh, foreman gets a room to himself. How about mixed doubles? Definitely none of that. I snore. I should tell people that. We don't mind sharing. Good. Keep moving. We're stuck. Take. We were driven to the hotel, even though it was just around the corner. The bailiff made sure no one came near us. It was like being under armed guard, like we were the ones on trial. And the whole time we knew there were people out there wondering what we were doing, what we were thinking, and when we would decide on the fate of Sir Joe.
You got us trapped, those bastards. C. No. Come on. L. Jesus, guys, you know the whole alphabet. <coughs> uh, everyone, if you could, um... Uh, thanks, thanks. Now, it's quite clear to my mind there's several meetings between Joe and Sung, so I think if we uh, go through these meetings, it'll become apparent whether Joe knew Sung at the time of the donation. Now, by the time Joe gave his evidence at the Fitzgerald, he'd known Sung for four years. Penny, would you mind... Um... Oh, sure. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, that's, uh, they met in 84, November 84, 23rd of November 84, the opening of Raby Bay. And the next day, um, Sung brought some people to oh, Joe's yeah, office. Is it Raby Bay? Now, ten months yeah. later... Well, you, you wouldn't remember him. I mean, uh, Sung said that Raby Bay was just like a handshake. I'm not debating that. I just want to identify when Joe and Sung had meetings and see where that leads. Yeah, but what Luke's saying is, was it actually a meeting? Well, no, it wasn't a meeting. It was just like more of an introduction than a proper meeting. If somebody is introduced to someone else, well, they meet, don't they? <laughs> it's a meeting. Well, let, let, let's just see how many meetings there were, and then we can work out which ones were significant, OK? I agree. Good. So, um, ten months later, Sung got Mrs Golby to take him to Joe's office. Uh, this is on the Dad, 18th Mrs. of Golby? September. And then on the She's next betting? day, the 19th, uh, he came Golby's back widow. with Solicitor McCluskey, and they discussed the Port Office site. <laughs> you don't know that. No, that's an assumption. All right, well, then let's look at the evidence. Val, have you got anything in your notes? I don't remember him talking about the port office. The port office site where they built the hotel. I know that. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I wasn't sure. In my notes, it just says, Sung talked to Sir Joe about Hong Kong Company. Yeah, that's right. Well... Two weeks later, Sung and McCluskey go and look at the Port Office site. It's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? How can you say that? I mean, that's that's not evidence of anything going on with Sir Joe. Look, I agree. Yeah, so do I. <clears throat> okay, what about the 6th of November when Joe and Sung had a meeting in Joe's office? Ah, uh, now that was um, about the uh, cocoa plantation. But that's not the point. Aren't we just trying to work out when they met? But it had nothing to do with anything but cocoa. Uh, it's another date for the list. Look, we've got evidence that Wharton, the Minister of Works, went into that meeting and told Joe and Sung about the public tendering for the port office site. And then five days later, Joe meets with Sung at the Sheraton. <laughs> they, they bumped into each other in the lobby. That's not the point. That's not a proper meeting if you just bumped into him. Well, what is it then, Val? You can't call that a meeting, you know. I mean, someone just bumps into him in the lobby, you know. It's just sort of like, hello. I mean, Joe probably thought it was someone from the country. Don't give me the shits. Now, come on, everyone. Take it easy. We're just trying to work out the dates, that's all. Look, he bumps into people all the time, hundreds of people every single day. Yeah, they probably didn't even recognise each other. Well, let's just forget about that and move on, <coughs> eh? OK, so the date of that last meeting was the 11th of November, 85. So from the end of 84 to the end of 85, they've met six times. Now, does everyone agree with that? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. OK, good. Now, we've got another meeting on the 19th of February. Ah, uh, now that was about cocoa as well. Look, coconuts, bananas, peanuts. Who gives a flying f what they talked about? <laughs> they met. And Sir Joe said he couldn't remember him. <clears throat> right, so um, then we've got the dinner that Sung had with Joe, Betty, Dot and George and Mr Tan, the video night. That was the 2nd, uh, 26th of the 2nd, 86. Is that a photograph taken on the night of the 26th of February, 1986? Yes, sir. At Parliament House or some other place? Parliament House. Would you tell the court, please, who the people are in the photograph? There's George Dunstan, Mr. S.H. Tan, myself, Dorothy Dunstan, and Sir Joe. Look, I thought the point of the exercise was to find out what the official meetings were, you know, not not social occasions. It's hardly a social occasion. He has dinner with fair. the Premier in Parliament House and the very next day gets his solicitor to send off a cheque for $15,000 to the National Party with a promise of $200,000 more. they only talked about the cocoa plantation. Oh, come on. If he paid $200,000 for a bit of dinner and a chat about a cocoa plantation, he'd be an idiot. Unless there was something else. Know what I mean? What? Well, since we're going to be doing business here in Queensland, I think we should make some political donations. 
the National Party. Is this a uh, normal procedure that happens day to day here? Yes, it is. Normal business practice with companies to donate election campaign donations to the party. Well, if that's the case, then we can go ahead and do something. But there's no election. Well, we just do something to show we support the government. The party. Say 15,000. And then if we decide to progress and do something bigger, we can uh, donate something larger. Well, what do, you, what do you mean by larger? Well, 100, 200,000. Well, if that's the way of life here, then you do what you have to do. Will you sort out Luke, all the meetings first and then the tick money. them off later? Yes, isn't that yes. Can we he get didn't back ask for the money. Yes. He gets checks all the time, lots of money. He said that himself. That's not what we're talking about. We were looking at the trip Joe and Sung took to the airport. Right, now later that day they went to the airport and that's where Sung introduced Joe to the region hotel man, Mr. Zeko. And by now I don't think they're talking about Coco. <laughs> <laughs> so, is your stop over long? 20 minutes. Robert tells me you have an interesting site for a hotel. Yes, we've got uh, big plans for it. What we wanted to do was to offer it up for tenders, but I know right up that it would make an excellent site for Region Hotel. My word would. You know about the Region Group, Mr. Premier? Oh, my word. A high regard. Very, very high regard. Uh, I always stay with the Region people. I go to Sydney or Melbourne, Hong Kong. When I go on a number of times, I stay, I stay there. I don't know that Brisbane is ready for it. Nonsense, sir. No, it's the right time, believe me. I would certainly be happy to discuss it with Bob Burns, my partner. I can ask him to actually go and see the site on his next visit to Australia. Good, or tell him to come and see me. I mean, I just don't think Sir Joe would remember that. I mean, he had so many meetings like that, they were yes, just in yes. and out. You're making Sir Joe sound like he an idiot. He went out to Brisbane Airport. The Premier of Queensland drove out for a 15-minute chat and a quick drink. <laughs> no, he wouldn't do that for me, would he? And a week later, he gives Sung two letters of introduction. You got that day? That doesn't well. count. Of course well, it bloody does. Why don't you just count, shut you know, up for five minutes and wake up? A day, you know, probably never even knew they were going out. That's it doesn't count. count. That's sign them. It, that's only your opinion. There's no proof. How can you say that? Haven't you got a brain in your... Read it, read it out. Just hang on a second. Here. Now, this letter will serve to introduce Mr. Robert Sung of Mount Siloso Propriety Limited. I've discussed this matter with him on a number of occasions and he has my full support in his endeavours, which will be of great benefit to Queensland. Signed, Joe Bjorki Peterson. Well, look, you can't make anything out of that. I mean, Sir Joe would write hundreds of letters like that. Oh, come on, he knew about the letters. It, there's no proof Sir Joe ever cited any documents. Oh, all right, what about the next week? Soon, Joe's little mate turns up with a watch. What about oh, the watch? I don't watch? think you can make much of that. A Rolex? How much well, of that? It's just like a someone watch, give like, me a you Rolex. Know, like a pack of Smarties. Well, exactly, it doesn't mean anything, you know? It's like, uh, it's a tradition for Asian businessmen to give away gifts like that. Look, I, I, don't, I don't get this, mate. Every time we come up with a date, you've got a problem with it. Well... I just want us to stick to the evidence. This is a bloody evidence. What are you and you're making it really moron. It's got to be relevant. You give Joe a three thousand dollar watch. You don't know that it was three thousand dollars. That's how much they cost. Well, it could have been a cheap one. Oh, yeah, right. No such bloody thing. God, you shit me. All right, what about the donation? Yeah, what about the donation? Well, it's just that, you know, a donation to the party. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with $100,000 in cash in a brown paper bag. Well, I'm not a Joe man. I just think that you want to make too much out of it. If I recall, around thereabouts, that, that period of time, I was under a lot of pressure to do something. It was explained to me it was to make a donation to the National Party for Joe for PM campaign. <clears throat> and it was the Canberra campaign that he was going for at that time. You say that you were under pressure. What was the pressure? Well, um, Mrs. Gomes was on to me practically every day, either in person or on the phone. You know, have you got it, you know? Have you got what? Uh, the, the donation, uh, ready to give to this campaign. Did you see Sir Joe on September the 17th, 1986? Yes, sir. Was there anyone else with you when you saw him? <clears throat> Mrs. Garms. Come in. 
Hello. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you, too. This is our donation for your campaign, for the Joe campaign for PM. Oh, yes. We'd like to wish you well, and I hope you win. Oh, thank you very much. Do you need a receipt? <laughs> no, no, no. It doesn't matter. It's all right. I'd just like to wish you well. Thank you. Joe admits himself the money came in a brown paper bag. Now, if it had been a genuine donation, it would have come in the form of a cheque to the party. He's wouldn't... not on trial for receiving money. He's only on trial for perjury. Song set you up the meeting with Zekko meeting. at the airport. Song set up the meeting with Joe on December the 15th to talk about the hotel. But that's not a meeting between Sir Joe and Song. He arranged a bloody meeting, well, you idiot. I mean, in that case, you can write anything up there you like. I thought you were just trying to get the dates that Sung was actually with Sir Joe. December the 15th. I'm not sure it's in these notes. Well, Jesus Christ, we've been going through this all day. I'm not sure. It's in here. Well, I'm sure it is, Val. If the court reporter, Mr Wordy, could come to you. Just because I took notes and you didn't. I didn't have to. I've got a memory. How many of these bloody things did you fill up? All full of gibberish and bullshit. You can't even work out if we're all at the same trial. Face it up, Headley. Take it easy, mate. And the, the thing is that I, I'm, I'm just not convinced, you know? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I can't make up my mind. I, it's not beyond reasonable doubt. Yes, reasonable doubt. <laughs> Do we all agree about reasonable doubt? I mean, I have reasonable doubt, but does anybody else here have the same I reason as mine? a few mine? doubts about you, Val. I mean, reasonable can just mean all right, you know, when the thing's just reasonable. I think we all know what reasonable doubt is, Val. It's a fair question. Christ's sake, we've been through the evidence all bloody day. Come on, wait a minute. Val doesn't understand. It's a reasonable question. Well, well you see, you call it evidence, but I think it's all a little too... It's common bloody sense. Well, I want to know about common sense. I mean, my common sense might be different from yours. I think it is, Val. By the end of the day, we had totaled up 23 separate occasions when Sung had met Sir Joe. But for Luke, there was a problem with every one. I was beginning to wonder if I was missing the point, if somehow my own logic was faulty. We'd like you to go over the meanings of some of the terms. Legal terms? The circumstantial evidence. Some of us aren't sure how it's applied under the law. And corroboration. How does that work in relation to the testimony of more than one witness? I mean, does it become a fact because it's been corroborated? And the use of common sense. I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, some of us have been concerned or a little confused about the use of common sense. You said in your summing up that uh, common sense had to be applied, but how does that relate to the evidence? Any of those terms is meant as it's found in common usage. Thank you, Your Honour. People are going to say my children are going to think I'm crazy. I know what common sense. Dickhead! Is. I don't believe you could have asked that. Look, question. I thought the judge would give us a better idea. For Christ's sake, it's as plain as a nose on your face. Well, I can't see the nose you on my face. Right about that. Now, you're a red ragged. That's your. Now, you're problem. a Joe lover. That's I it. Isn't that's what the problem. Come on, boys. Let's not bring politics into this. You start. What he says about this. The bloody evidence is up on that board. For Christ's sake. Stop yelling, please. Calm down, Hedley. Why can't I help it? He's as thick as a brick. Excuse me. I don't think we're going to get anywhere if we keep yelling at each other. Let's go over it again. We've been over it 40 bloody times. You're as bad as he is, Val. Go over it, go over it. You just don't get it, do you? You don't get it. The man is a crook. I don't mind if we go over it again, Val. I can't help thinking Sir Joe did a lot of good things for Queensland. Like what? I wasn't speaking to you. Like the way he stood up to the unions in the Sequeb trouble and the developing of the mine. I just think he had too much on his mind. I don't think he would lie, especially to a court. But if he did, he didn't, he didn't know he was doing it. Didn't I just say no more politics? <laughs> OK, blokes. I think we'll have a break now. Yeah, break your friggin' neck. Why? We've just had a break. It's getting a bit heated, that's all. No, no, I think what we need is a new foreman. Everyone else agree? <laughs> yes. 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 I've been the foreman since the beginning of the trial. You can't change me now. <laughs> Will you do it, Kev? Yeah, sure. 
Well, you can't go into court with another foreman? No, no, OK, but I want the discussions organised a bit better than it's happening now. What about it, Kev? Yeah, well, all right. Um, <clears throat> well, let's work out where we are at the moment. Um, anyone want to go through it again? You can't just change a foreman like that. It's just I not fair. I'm going for a smoke. I'm not sure about a lot of things. I wouldn't mind knowing what everyone else is thinking. Yes, I'd like to know what everyone is thinking too. Fair enough. Look, the charge isn't even a proper one anyway. Just shut up, Luke! The Fitzgerald Royal Commission was set up to deal specifically with corruption and prostitution. They had no right to ask the questions they did, and he knew they had no right. Of course they bloody should. That's what they were there you for. You can't just go into a Royal Commission and ask whatever sort of questions it you want. It wasn't a Royal Commission. It was an inquiry. Well, there you go. It wasn't even a Royal Commission. Rest my case. Come on, stop it. Luke, that's totally irrelevant. Well, I want to hear what everybody thinks about the evidence. Come on. Everybody sit around the table and we'll all have our say. Oh, that's great. That's just what we need, a third bloody foreman. Evelyn, you can go first. Oh, I don't think that I'm ready yet, Belle. Madonna? Well, I'm still looking at the evidence. Stand up. Stand up so everybody knows who's talking. I'm still looking at the evidence, but it... At the moment, I feel that he didn't tell all that he knew. That's perjury. Will you please sit down until it's your turn to speak? Kevin. He didn't tell the truth. All that stuff in Fitzgerald was trying to keep him away from the whole deal. Yeah, that's right. Will you please keep quiet until you're spoken to? I just think that he must have known. That's not proof. Penny. Would you I'm... please stop smoking in here? Thank you. <laughs> Penny, you go ahead. I'm still working my way through the exhibits. He, he didn't get anything out of it. He's got that going for him. It's just that I think he knew a lot more than he said he did. Of course he bloody did. Brad. I don't know if I've got more to add to it, Val. Except maybe what a complete mongrel old sunshine over there is. Hey, hey, hey. Kev? Oh, I got an open mind, but there's nothing I've heard so far that makes me think he's definitely innocent. That's reasonable doubt. Just shut up, you uni wanker. Matthew, it's your turn now. Would you please come to the table? I think there's, there's enough evidence to convict. Every time a decision was made about the hotel site, Joe was involved. He and Sung were mates. Where's the proof? Well, I think Sung sums it up in his letter to Proctor. His lawyer wrote that. You, you'll get your say in a minute, Luke. Right. Robert is quite friendly with the Premier. I mean, that, that's pretty clear, isn't it? E even if his lawyer did write it, you've still got him telling a trustee of the National Party Robert Sung is a mate of Sir Joe's. None of that is beyond reasonable doubt. Dave. Well, I reckon he knew. Not unless he'd completely lost his marbles. Thelma? He couldn't have forgotten everything about Saul. It was a very important project for Queensland. I don't care what anybody says. He was being very clever. Now, Luke. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm not convinced. It's not beyond reasonable doubt. I mean, he was an old man, he, he hadn't been Premier for over 12 months, and uh, I think that he lost a lot of his mental powers after he resigned. That happens a lot to people after they retire. So what's your excuse, Jerkoff? Could Sir Joe have forgotten about the donation? Well, he didn't have an excellent memory when I joined him in 1980, and it, it progressively got worse. Was he likely to forget important things? He used to call me Stan. And your name is Michael? Stan was the name of his previous secretary. Well, that's a common mistake. We always provided him with lists, uh, identifying his ministers with their portfolios to take into cabinet meetings. What about events? Like meeting people? I recall once uh, when he was in Perth for the America's Cup. 
He went on national television and said he was there for the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> What about me, Val? You didn't ask me. You weren't sitting at the table. I'm part of the jury, aren't I? If you want your say, you'll have to sit at the table. He's waiting for the music to stop. I think he's guilty. Song has dinner with Joe at Parliament House. The next day, he sends a cheque to the party and takes Joe to meet Mr Regent Hotels. A week later, he gives Joe a Rolex and gets the letters of introduction. Joe knew what was going on. Doesn't count if you don't sit at the table. <laughs> Just going around in circles. Yeah, I know. Been a funny feeling about that bloke from the start. You notice how he never wants to suggest anything? Never wants to put dates up on the board? He's not trying to get anywhere. I get the impression you want to be alone. You like it better in the dress circle. I like being on top. Just <laughs> 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 surprised they're still out. She told me not to tell anybody, but she reckons there's a young nat on the jury. Oh, yeah? Some guy called Luke. Luke? Not Luke Shaw. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> it's bullshit. No, she says she found out from some official high up in the party. She says they all know. Keep them coming, Molly. There's 120 out there this morning. Oh, no, don't you worry about that. I'm willing to earn no money at all just to be here and let Joe know that I'm here when the going's tough. The judge spent the day waiting in a small room while the jury spent the day deliberating behind closed doors. So Joe and everyone else will have to wait until the jury makes up his mind. By Thursday, we'd been through most of the evidence and the discussions had become hopelessly fragmented. The score was seven guilty, one innocent, three wavering, and Val, who didn't seem to know where she stood. If you can't remember him now, well, that means he couldn't remember him after meeting him 13 or 14 times in one year, right? I suppose you'd have to remember him after a while. Yeah, well, right. Well, that's the way I see it, too, that you'd have to have known or, or at least remembered him. I mean, they'd all think we're stupid, wouldn't they, if all that stuff doesn't add up to him at least knowing soon. I don't understand. What don't you understand? Well, well it all gets back to common sense, doesn't it? What do you mean by common sense? Uh, hey, shut up, mate. Well, who would bother having Just anything to do with him after they'd been to a meeting? He, he couldn't remember who the hell they were. I mean, I, I'm being as honest as I can about this thing, but I think he's pulling everyone's leg. I wouldn't like to see him go to jail. Well, they wouldn't do that. He's too old. They'd give him a fine and send him home or something. I hate to no, think thanks. of a lovely old yeah, man like that in prison. So Joe would have 50 meetings like that a day. 50 meetings? OK, 50 meetings, 50 people. It doesn't matter. I mean... It doesn't matter how many times you actually bump into people, it doesn't mean to say that you necessarily know them. He's an old man, you can forget. Thanks a lot, Luke. That's ridiculous. Gee, you're such a wally. Luke, I don't think he was senile. 
Yeah. Look, I don't know, you know, he was under a lot of pressure and I wouldn't be surprised if he was a little sent off, especially towards the end. Luke, we're not talking about the end, we're talking about the beginning. What does that mean? When he got the donation, he was running the state. Are you telling us that he was senile then? Yeah, prove to us, Luke, when exactly what he's senile. You can't have it both ways. Well, do... Sir Joe doesn't have to prove anything. I'm sick of this. This bugger down the other end here isn't going to give in. He's just going to keep us here till we can't take anymore. He's such a he loser. He's an old man, OK? You see, he came from the country, and, and, and he'd, be, he'd be interested in, in country issues rather than what happens in Brisbane. I mean, don't forget, Coco is like a $300 million blah, blah, industry, which blah, is a bigger blah, boost blah, for the blah, country blah, than blah, any blah. sort of hotel Jesus, development. you're a you boring know? turd! Look, I, I don't think Joe would know what was going on anyway, you know? He was very busy organising Expo and everything Luke, else. he was the Premier of Queensland. How could he not know what was going on? God, he was the Treasurer as well. He was senile and under a great deal of pressure, Thelma. OK, well, look, how about a secret ballot? How about you take a flying leap out the window? We don't need a secret ballot. We're not getting anywhere. Go in, Luke. Tell him it's a hung jury. Oh, well, it's OK for you, Thelma, isn't it? Because you came in here with preconceived look ideas. Look who's bloody talking! You came in here with an open mind. That's not what I've seen. See, other people haven't made up their mind. Val's still going over it. We've been over it so many times, I know the transcript off she by heart. She hasn't made up her mind. There are a few things I'm still not sure about. We've been here three bloody days. You keep on putting pressure on her. Now, Val, is there anything that you want to go over? There are a few things I'd like to look at. When this is all over, they're going to make a monument to you. The big asshole they're going to call it. Queensland's latest tourist attraction. Look, you little twerp! If you're one of those bad boys, I'll show you, you, you a real You shut up, OK? You shut up! You think you can put it all over everybody else? You think so bloody smart! Shut up, I'm everybody else! Don't you? You nutcase! Don't you come in here and tell me what you're going to do with us? Put them down, mate. Right? Well, you don't know what a prick you are, do you? When you find out, mate, it's going to be downhill from there, let me tell you. I can look forward to that. You child. <laughs> well said, mate. We had lost our way. We were no longer a jury trying to reach agreement on a matter of perjury. The deliberations had descended into a brawl over an old man's memory and the meaning of words. For the first couple of days, Headley had provided the impetus, but now even he seemed to have lost his inspiration. Luke had undermined any logical discussion. We needed a miracle. Now, there's a couple of places where Joe evades the question. No risk. When Drummond asked him, at the time that gentleman brought the $100,000 to you, was he at that very time actually in business in Queensland? And Joe says, not that I know of, no. I don't know that he was. No. He, he meant that he didn't have a business. <laughs> ah, but he did have a business. Historic holdings. He called himself a businessman and for at least a year he'd been meeting Joe and talking business. Now Joe says he wasn't in business. Well, if he wasn't in business, what the hell was he doing? Well, he was, he was trying to set up a business, so he wasn't in business because it hadn't been set up yet. OK. Another one. Just over the page. Now he's asked, isn't it clear then that you would have had some discussions with this gentleman about his plans for future investments in Queensland at some stage? And Joe says, now you talk to me like that, I can remember what it was we did talk about. He came back many months later to start a coca plantation in North Queensland. Growing coconut palms. <laughs> he didn't come back to start a coca plantation because by the beginning of 1986, he was already working on his hotel. In fact, at the end of 1985, he and Joe had talked about it. So why doesn't he want to talk about the hotel? Well, I explained that. It's because he'd be more interested in the country. Bullshit. <laughs> OK. The best to last. Three times he evades a direct question about the hotels. It's all on tape. Just listen to this. Did he have any plans to get into business in Queensland, according I, to what you understood? I think that he, uh, he may have wanted to get into business in Queensland sometime, yes. <laughs> and what did you understand to be the area of business in Queensland that he was contemplating getting into? Well, they, uh, they were... He was uh, an overseas man from Hong Kong. And they own all sorts of businesses. Well, what range of businesses did uh, 
did you understand that this particular gentleman from Hong Kong was contemplating getting into? Well, if you put it like that, I believe he wanted to, like most of them, get into the hotel business somewhere. Where, in Brisbane or in the country? I think anywhere they had a suitable proposition. Three. And a few minutes later, Drummond tries again. And this time, Joe says, yes, I would believe he could be interested in hotels. Yes, sure. And Drummond asks him, in Brisbane or in the country? And Joe says, well, I, I didn't have any discussions in depth with him. He's evading the question, right? Right. Yeah, I've, I've made up my mind. I think he's guilty. Me too. Um, it seems very clear, don't you think so, Val? You see, he admits Sung could be interested in hotels. And when he's asked in Brisbane or the country, he changes his subject to when Sung came to give him the donation. What do you think, Luke? <laughs> Look, it's all pretty clear. Come on, Luke. He, he knows about the hotel site. He knows where it is. He spent two years talking about it. He's evaded the question three times. You don't know what's in his mind. Evasion is perjury, Luke. What do you think, Luke? Joe evades those three questions, doesn't he? Cat got your tongue, Luke. Okay, so we all agree he evades those questions. Hey, come on, Luke. I'm talking to you. What do you think? Um, Val, Val, do you, do you want to uh, go over anything? Judge wants to see him. You're not going to no, no, no. let them win you over. I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Mr. Foreman, I was wondering if there's any prospect of a verdict today. Uh, probably not today, Your Honour, no. Uh, we're well on the way, but I don't know if today or this evening one will be forthcoming. If there's any more assistance I can be to you, please don't hesitate to tell the bailiff. Thank you, Your Honour. They're all in agreement that Joe evaded the question three times. Yes, yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm still thinking about that one. Oh, I'm trying to think about the bloody thing. You're crazy the bloody thing, thing this afternoon. I don't agree about it. Was something well, being considered? Was something not being considered? You went and said to the judge, we're well on our way, and you're not even looking at the other side. We're well on our way. I think you need more time. You've got your hands up. I know you think that I've let you down. I think you've let me 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 down. I know you think that I've led a sheltered life, but I have never heard anybody talking to each other like that. It's awful, Betty. Oh, I know it's horrible, but unfortunately it's real life. Yes, but it's not the real life I have in my home. No, not in mine either. But unfortunately, it's not a normal situation. It'll all be over soon. Hey, shit, no, no, it's all right. What you just a bloody start. You, 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 you have got no right to ask around with a Queensland people, mate. Do you think one of us will talk to the judge? No, we can't. Otherwise, he'll call a mistrial, and none of us want that. Oh, I suppose you're right. Yes, and think of all the money that's cost. Oh, sorry, girl. It's a smoker. You're a bloody dickhead. Dickhead, dick. Sorry, girl. And so, Kevin's brilliant explanation had come to nothing. After dinner, Val went back to picking over the meaning of every word in the indictment. In the end, she asked for a dictionary. She got two. And we waited while she buried her nose in them for hours. 
She looked up so many words we started to wonder if she knew the meaning of anything at all. This was the third night in a row that we'd been locked up till 10 p.m. and everyone was totally exhausted. Except Brad, who was at a loose end now that the batteries in his Game Boy had died and the bailiff wouldn't get him any more. Wake up, Luke. <laughs> yeah. Since you keep asking me why I think he's guilty, I've written it out for you. Well, what do you think? Perjury. The action of swearing to a statement known to be false, specifically in law, the crime of willfully uttering false evidence. She's foul. Words. I mean, don't you think that we know that? What do you think we've been sitting in that courtroom listening to for two weeks? She's a brick short of the word. Circumnavigation. Have you gone past circumcision yet, Val? Circumstantial. <laughs> of relating to or dependent on circumstances. Look up boring, Val. Bradley, I think you should take this seriously. Don't worry, I know what it means. I suppose you're missing your husband a bit. Kevin and I have got a half bottle in the fridge. What? Four X. We asked all the other girls, but they wouldn't be in it. <laughs> no thanks. Why have sausages when you can have steak at home? <laughs> hey, what's this? The juror's ball. No, it's a smoking room. Where's the glass? Oh, no, I got a wash. You can say that again. Oh, just because your mum ironed every single thing in your wardrobe. Did you stick your teddy in there as well? I've never been for the long haul. Mm, too long. I think in the morning we should tell the judge it's over. We can't. Something will happen. They can't hold out forever. Wouldn't put my last two bob on it. Get the feeling we're not going to get out of here alive. No, I think <laughs> Val is trying very hard to understand, you know? Me too. She <laughs> kidding. No, it's, look, she's not saying she's made up her mind yet. She's saying I need more time. To do what? My turn to talk to her tomorrow. Waste of bloody time. We should give them all the time they want. Why? This afternoon I heard Val telling Luke not to give in. They're working together, can't you see that? We're the ones being worn down. Maybe you misinterpreted it. Look, you know, just today, three more of us made up our minds. I mean, it took me three days. Well, Donna's right. We've got to be fair. If Val says she needs more time, we've got to give it to her. For Christ's sake, Luke won't be able to hold out if she comes round. Yeah, and when will that be? If what you're saying is true, we should tell a judge. Oh, yeah, and what are we going to say? We're going to get up and say, oh, excuse me, Your Honour, Luke is a pain in the ass, and he's not representing <laughs> us correctly. What do you think's going to happen exactly. then? Exactly. Luke's the foreman. He's got to represent us. But if we have a problem, we should be able to talk to the judge. We should be able to sort that ourselves. Look, some people just need more time, OK? Oh, open your bloody eyes. It's a political trial. That's bullshit, Dave, bullshit. Every day I sit in that jury room, I ask myself if I've got an open mind. Did I walk in here prepared to let the evidence direct me? And the answer is yes, I do have a bloody open mind. If Joe's innocent, I can accept the possibility. And that's the truth. Well, I still think it's a political trial. And they're not going to budge. Someone ought to tell that bastard what a shit he is. I think you already have. What's the matter with you all? Are you all bloody Christians or something? What? You all been too soft on him. He's putting one over the lot of you. You've got to be fair. Yeah, we'll tell that to the bloody cops who keep pinching the beer. <laughs> tell that to the judge. <laughs> We started the next morning with good intentions to give Val as much time as she needed. But when she began looking up the same definitions for the 50th time, Headley was ready to jump out the window. Except it was locked. 
I'm not sure if perjury has a different meaning if it isn't in a court of law. It's a legal term. It means lying. I'm not convinced he didn't want to tell the truth, and I'd like to ask the judge... Oh, you mean he didn't knowingly tell a lie? If someone had been a politician and had been used to, well, they're not, they're not lies exactly. They're more like um, deviations or something like that. Then it might be very hard for him to tell the truth. So if he's a practice liar, we let him off. You keep away from me, you're a bully! What do I do? You don't think a politician could tell the truth? You're too young, mate. Oh, well, Kevin, look, you're his foreman. You tell him what the point is. I lost the point. You see, I think the point is that you don't seem to want to look at the evidence. I have. Oh, yes, you have, you have. You go through all your notes and all the evidence, but your eyes are shut the whole time. I am trying to understand why you think he's done something wrong. Doesn't matter what I think. That's exactly right. I would never say that to your face, though. Say that again. Hang on, hang on. We're just going around in bloody circles. Uh, all I ask for is the proof. All you give me is your opinion. Oh, no. I'm going to get some peace. Lucky old you. I beg your pardon. I'm not a Joe man, but I think... Yeah, you, you, you tell me what you think, Luke. You just tell me one more time why you think all these dates and all these events are pure bloody coincidence. Well, actually, I don't feel like it right now, Headley. Think you feel like telling the judge we've had it, pal? No, because we haven't. <laughs> We'd had it all right, but Luke wouldn't accept it. What was obvious to the majority of us was lost on him. But he was our official spokesman, and so long as he wanted to keep going, we were trapped. With nothing to do but kill time, while Penny struggled on with Val regardless. Was he actually in business in Queensland at that time? And Sir Joe said no. Not that I know of, no. Do you see? I don't understand. There are just so many things to remember. No, I wouldn't take too much notice of that. We are trying to work through this ourselves. I'm just trying to help. No, you're not. Go away. OK. There were five or six meetings. Yeah. Oh, no, no, the I really important know. ones. The ones where Song tried to push through the hotel. Everything that Penny says is just, well, I just take it with a grain of salt. You just can make up your own mind. Just shut up, Luke! Just shut up! Hey, look, we're getting nowhere here. Obviously, we're not going to reach a verdict. I agree. What are we going to do? Tell the judge we're a hung jury. Val hasn't made up her mind. Is that true, Val? There are a few things I'm still going over in my mind. We're not a hung jury if people are still going over things. There is a man's life in our hands. Yeah, mine's slipping away. Like sands through the elbow. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. You're a cheeky boy. I don't know if you're interested. I work for the Criminal Justice Commission, and I've got a mate who tells me that one of your jurors is in the Young Nationals. Not only that, he was an office bearer. Young Nationals? Really? Yeah. Hello? Mr. Eddy. Yeah? Robert Needham, Special Prosecutor's Office. We've just learned that you have some information about one of the jurors on Sir Joe's trial. I... I don't want to cause any trouble. You won't be causing any trouble. Uh, can you tell me how you came by your information? A friend in the National Party. Can you tell me their name? Alison Mooney. If I send a car, will you come in? I don't the know. Estate? I don't know if I can do that. Do you know the juror personally? Yeah, I've met him a few times. I understand he's been a branch secretary. Oh, yeah. He's a real Joe man. I'd like to ask the judge another question. Gee. Uh, 
Look, I think Val should be able to ask the judge whatever she likes if it's going to help her make up her mind. I want to know that if you've spent your life not telling all the truth... But Val, we decide, not the judge. That's how the system works. We represent the people of Queensland. How would you know? You're a foreigner. Nasty, nasty. Look! You're not going into that courtroom until you've written it down on a piece of paper so the bloke down the end there at a table can read it out without making a muck of it. It's not easy to find the right words. You can't ask the judge what he thinks of the evidence. Why not? That's what he's there for! Yes, but he can only tell us how to look at the evidence. But you want to ask him if he thinks Joe's guilty? Not exactly. Yes, exactly. That's what you want to ask him. What do you think? I have to come to a decision by myself, Val. I don't want to be on my own. Please, Luke. But I thought we were together. I, I thought... have to make up my own mind. Of course you do. That's what I've been telling well, all the others. I think he's guilty, that's all. You can't say oh. that, Val! Don't you think None it... None of you have rationally sorted through all this. How can you come to that decision? Are you listening to me? Me? Val, that's just not true. You've already made up your mind because you're a communist trade unionist. You say that about me and all... You're all mentally unstable. Sick. You need psychiatric treatment. Oh, Val, come off. You say that and I'll I don't you. care what you say. You can't be mentally stable. You say that about me. You mention my name like that and I'll sue you. You hear that woman? I'll sue you. I'll sue you. Yeah. The longer it went on, the sillier it became. We couldn't keep pretending that Val just needed a bit more time. It was obvious where she stood. But as for Luke, he wasn't giving anything away. And the harder we tried to understand, the less it made sense. You realise we don't have a lot of time. If that jury makes a decision, it'll be too late and there won't be a thing we can do about him. When did you join the National Party? The late 88 or 89, I can't remember. I'm not financial at the moment. And how long have you known Luke Shaw? He was the secretary of something when I joined. Do you know him well? I'd seen him at meetings, he gave me a lift home once, that sort of thing. He's a gung-ho supporter for Joe. What do you mean by that? Oh, he talked about making ground against the socialists at university, that sort of stuff. He talked about the friends of Joe a bit. There was a meeting being organised and uh, people had to ring him if they wanted to be in it. You know, when I was a kid, you could catch anything in the Brisbane River. Yeah, I'll bet. Dysentery, bubonic plague. Always get a meal. Hey, um, can you get AIDS from drinking water? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Flathead, brim. Well, no, there's nothing like a big to make juicy up my own piece mind. of brim with and Why didn't battle. you do it? Mm -hmm. Still I did, you. I just did. No, no you traitor. Why did it take you so long? What made you change your mind? They want me to catch you. <laughs> So how did you find out? You know, just a friend of a friend. She was talking to someone high up in the party and at a function of some sort. We wouldn't be so worried if he was just a member, but he's been an official of the party. We'll try to keep you out of court. I got a lot of friends in the Young Nats. You know what they'd do if they found out? I don't know. They wipe me like a dirty rag. We're going to subpoena National Party headquarters for records. I can't make you do this. If you don't want to do this, we can just pack up and go home. No one else is going to help us. I want to see Doug Drummond. We don't need the special prosecutor to do this. No, I have to say him. I won't sign it until I've seen him. We know how difficult this is for you. Shouldn't be on it. It's not right, that's all there is to it. I don't know, everyone in the party is gonna think I dobbed him in.
It's the principle of the thing, though, isn't it? Well, we all agree on that. What will happen to Luke? Oh, well, from what you've told us, nothing. See, if we can convince the judge to dismiss him from the jury, he'll probably just get a slap on the wrists and sent home. Sir Joe. Sir Joe. Bob, what are you doing? Sir Joe, the uh, prosecutor's office contacted us. I see. And they want us to agree to a mistrial. They want to dismiss the jury. What for? They found out about Luke Shaw. What did they find out? He's a young national. What? They, they, they do want to put me on trial again? Oh, that's what they're saying. So we thought we'd come and tell you and get your opinion about all this. No, that's their problem. I, d I don't want to dismiss them. Uh, your Honour, the Crown has two applications to make to Your Honour. Yes? One is an application uh, pursuant to Section 626 of the Criminal Code <coughs> that the jury be discharged without giving a verdict. Your Honour, in view of information that has only late today come to the notice of the Crown, the application is made on the basis of evidence available concerning the motives and strengths of the views held by the member of the jury towards the accused. People gone. It's Saturday. I think I omitted to ask you, Mr. Russell, what is your position with the National Party of Australia, Queensland? Senior Vice President. Mr. Cowdery, what is the relevance of these minutes? The relevant material in this bundle, Your Honour, is the mention of the person's name in the minutes and the appearance of his name in the register of branch officials. Do you want me to read all these minutes now? <laughs> no, Your Honour, not all the minutes, but if Your Honour goes to the fourth page, which is headed Young Nationals Branch Officials, Your Honour will see the name on that page. Not the one where Luke Shaw gave a talk on patriotism? No, Your Honour. And then somebody joined him in a duet, is that right? Singing Advance Australia Fair? <laughs> uh, it's the page before that, Your Honour. Where he's the secretary? Uh, yes, it provides corroboration of some material in the affidavit that was tendered last night. Most of Saturday was taken up arguing with Luke and Val over some questions they wanted to ask the judge. We simply weren't prepared to let Luke go into court and misrepresent us again. One question, right? And make it short. Look, if it's that important to you, you can read it, OK? It's just a question on evasion and false testimony. Yo, yeah, well, we're not li Listen to me, mate. We're not leaving this room till we know what you've written down. Quit your whispering, too. You're like a, a couple of schoolgirls. Well, come on, let's see it. Come on. Jesus wept. It's a page long. <laughs> Could the judge indicate if at the time Sir Joe gave evidence, the restriction on the use of Sung's no, our name, well, what the... We've been through that before. We have not dealt with it, OK, because during Fitzgerald, nobody could use Sung's name, which means that Joe had no way of knowing who they well, were so talking about. The press order was to stop it the press publishing Sung's name. It, Joe mate. could talk about him till the friggin' cows he come home. He didn't know who he was. He named him in his statement. Of course he bloody knew who he was. If he didn't know who they were talking about, why didn't he ask? What is this scuttlebutt? There is not one skerrick of material emanating from the jury that would give rise to any feelings of disquiet that in some way the processes of law are not working properly. There's been no indication from the jury of any impropriety or pressure. And why should there be? We've known about Mr Luke Shaw's political preferences. 
just as we've known about other members of the jury. One of them's a trade union official, a union affiliated with the Labour Party. There's nothing unusual about the presence of a National Party member or a trade unionist on a jury. Is a verdict of guilty proper if the accused didn't intend to commit the offence? There we go. You yeah. ask that. We're all going to look bloody stupid. What a bunch of dickheads. That's what the judge is going to say. I don't want you asking that stupid question. You ask a question about evasion and that's it. OK, then we'll just get a general direction on evasion. We should get that clarified for Val's sake. You'll just ask about evasion. Just the definitions. Is that all right, Val? I suppose. And that's all you're going to ask him, right? Yeah, sure. In the circumstances, there being no evidence that the juror in question has declared any bias about the matters, the subject of these proceedings, the proper inquiries having been made of the jury at the beginning of the trial, and proper directions having been given to them in the summing up, I see no valid basis to discharge the jury. No emergency of the sort referred to in section 626 of the criminal code has arisen. I dismiss the application. As your honor, please. Gentlemen, the jury through the bailiff have requested a redirection. Members of the jury, I'm sorry there has been some delay. There's another matter that had to be attended to before we could proceed. Yes, is there something that you wanted to...? There are a, a number of matters, Your Honour. <clears throat> the uh, first is general directions on perjury and false testimony. Uh, we are divided on a number of points. Yes. Uh, perjury, false testimony, if you could explain further. Uh, do you want me to go through them now and then...? Yes. Well, the second is some uh, direction and clarification is required of this as a point of law. Also, you said in your directions, uh, you must be satisfied that the accused knowingly gave false testimony. It is not enough if he gave it inadvertently or mistakenly. That's right. Also, in your first directions on general matters, a re reasonable doubt. Luke, You said that's any doubt enough. is reasonable doubt, if you could just clarify that any doubt business. I don't believe I did say that. You didn't say that. Rightio, uh, we will scrap that. Uh, finally, it was said... Well, just a minute. The onus of proof on the Crown is to establish the guilt of the accused beyond a reasonable uh, doubt. That's fine, thank you. That's, in essence, what I said. Right, it, it was also said that to release Sung's name or significantly identify him, either by description or by his actions, could become a charge in co contempt of court or the Commission of Inquiry. Uh, to what extent is this valid? Can I answer that in this way? Mr Fitzgerald said... The name appearing on page 19 in the first and second line will be restricted from publication until I have reconsidered the matter. The name, of course, in question was that of Mr. Sung. That was the context in which the accused was answering questions. The accused is charged with perjury and failing to tell the whole truth in his answer to questions. It's a matter of fact for you to decide what the relevant question meant. Uh, just one second, Your Honour. Uh, you recall, Your Honour, uh, on that earlier... Uh, I think the second thing I said was we require a judicial meaning for the terms uh, evasion, up. omission, memory, inadvertent. Uh, is it possible to... Luke, stop it. Well, those, again, are ordinary English words. Well, can Are you I... wanting me to give you the ordinary English meanings? If that is so, I think it would be preferable if I resort to a dictionary. No, we have one of those. Rather than trying to define it without doing so. But... Would a dictionary explanation be useful then to us in defining these words? We could use that.
job. Right, You're only supposed to ask you one question. You got any convicting a politician? Well, a higher court will decide that. Oh, what higher court? It's all been court. rationally thought out. Everything we've said and the questions we've asked. Stop It's not for us to judge Sir Joe. You're a bloody dickhead. You get it, all right? Look, Kedley, you can say what you like. You're a dickhead. Everyone here seems to have a dickhead. You get me? Listen, mate, you're full of bullshit. You're a game you're playing. Stick it at my dog. That's for your mate. Bowery here. Don't you know what you're doing? Don't you look like he's looking at the bunch of nuts, which makes him look good because he's the one who won't take his mind. You go away, asshole. I don't know what your problem is, dickhead. You're a dickhead. Luke had finally conceded that he couldn't change our minds. But it took another six hours to convince Val of what most of us had known for the past two days. When Luke made his announcement to the court, it hit me that this was the first time he'd ever spoken for all of us. Yes, Mr. Foreman? Your Honour, we believe there is no prospect of reaching a verdict. Yes. All right. Perhaps I should explain to you the position and I may ask you to try a little longer, but no longer than is necessary. If any of you should find him or herself in a small minority and disposed to differ from the rest, you should consider the matter carefully. Weigh up the reasons for and against your view and remember that you may be wrong. Did you hear what the judge said? You know? Well, look what he said, you know? Everything else has gone over your flaming head, hasn't it? Why don't you listen? He said this to you, and you're not doing a damn thing about it. Well, let's take another vote. No, look, I, I think we should forget it. What is it I'm missing, Luke? What can you see that we can't? Isn't it awful? There's only two honest people out of the 12 of us. I came onto this jury believing I was representing all the people in this state. All my family and friends, all the people, and they would want me to look at the evidence and keep an open mind, you know, for them. Because I was picked, because that's what justice is supposed to be about. But I don't believe that. I feel like I've let everybody down. I feel like something has gone wrong and we haven't been able to do anything about it. We've been too bloody polite. <clears throat> I think it's time to tell them we're finished. Let's take a vote. Guilty? Not guilty? I'm undecided, so I've got to vote not guilty. Can't just let it go like this. We can't, we can't, we just can't. Can't you see this is the way it was always going to end up? We should stay in here and keep going, keep going until they kick us out. It's not fair. Two people holding out on us for no reason and we can't do anything about it. We've been too bloody for life! <laughs> Every time we came back in from the court, it was, oh, the judge said this and the judge said that. Well, huh. what about now, huh? The judge said, you might be wrong. You're in the minority and you might be wrong. But you're not listening to the judge now, are you? Are you? You're, you're just, you're just not being true, mate. <laughs> oh, well, they've got what they want. Yes, Mr. Foreman? Your Honour, uh, nothing has changed since last time. We are still... Uh, <clears throat> uh, there is no prospect of reaching a verdict. And that's the view of all the members of the jury? Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. 
It's unanimous, Your Honour. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I know you have tried your best. These things do happen from time to time. I thank you for your consideration in this difficult matter, and I discharge you from this jury. Folks, this is your last time in this room, so make sure you get everything, please. You can't be responsible for anything left behind, right? Oh, oh, Penny? Yeah. Give me your phone number okay. and your address. Hey, I'll yes. see you later, OK, Penny? Yeah. Look after yourself. Yeah. Quietly. Yeah. Put it in there, love. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, you too. Yeah, I see you going away. Yeah. Sorry about all the abuse. Oh, my God. Yeah, see you later. Look after yourself all the best. I'll never know why Brad shook his hand. I guess Brad will never know either. Maybe he was being a good sport, or maybe it was relief it was all over. But I was damned if I was going to say goodbye. I was angry, and I wanted to hold on to it. If I was going to take anything away, it was a feeling of being used. I am innocent, and these people in here couldn't prove otherwise. Didn't I tell you I was innocent? Yeah. And they can't prove it. And I don't care whether they take another four years, they'll never prove it, because there's nothing to prove. Yeah. I have given my complete dedication of half my life and more uh, to, to Queensland. Yeah. And, I never, and I never expected there'd be any powers that be in any shape or form that would try to reward me as they have rewarded me. They are never get any further than they already have, up a road, up a dry gully. Queensland I knew and loved and served and grew and expanded and people Only hours before the jury was discharged, the Crown tried to have the whole trial aborted. It was revealed that the jury foreman was an active member of the National Party and had connections with the Friends of Joe Association. Luke Shaw had been a branch secretary of the Young Nationals and was described by the Crown as an admirer and supporter of the former president. It alleged that a trade unionist was also on the jury, as well as the wife of a Labor Party member. Kev? Yeah, ma. Oh, you poor thing. How was it? Not bad. <coughs> Terrible about your foreman being a Joe man. What? It was on the news. Your foreman was a member of the National Party. <laughs> it's true. That's life. Oh, so, I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about it. Hello? Yes. Uh, yes, my name is Matthew Shea. I, um... Just, yes, I was on the Joe trial. The yesterday. day after the trial, I spoke to the Attorney General, Dean Wells, and the next day I went to his office. I knew most of the others would support me. I told him I had spoken to the Sheriff and the Director of Prosecutions about my concerns over the conduct of the deliberations. I wanted to know how the jury had been chosen. Why weren't we given a better idea of our rights as jurors? 
I was told the judge had instructed the sheriff to carry out an investigation into these matters. We would just have to wait. <laughs> 